You have to peel it first. Cute it first. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> do not like the skins on. Onto our freak. No. no. Part of this wonderful freak. No. Ah, nephew Steven. That looked like really nice risotto. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad this we show about biryani. <laughs> 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 Chef Brian Tsao here, not your typical chef, owner of Mission Sandwich Social, located right here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and the only winner of Beat Bobby Flay Season 1. And today, I'm going to be reacting to Uncle Roger found the worst biryani. Before I go on with today's episode, I do want to give a special shout out to all of my amazing sous chef level patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your support. You, along with all the patrons, really do make a difference on this channel. And remember, by becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, patron exclusive content, and now even extended versions of certain episodes. So please consider becoming a patron today. Epicurious is how Uncle Roger found my queen of flavor. Auntie Shout out Esther, to Esther. In one of Uncle Roger's favorite YouTube channel because I use it like Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> a little creepy there. I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Rinko, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Danielle Alex, creator of Diversity Kitchen, and I've been a professional chef for 15 years. Mm, she the pro. Okay, okay. This recipe was developed over the weekend. Over weekend? Most Indian recipe developed over a thousand yeah, of years. Yeah, for real. But this guy just <laughs> used Saturday and Sunday. Soak the rice to loosen some of the starch. Okay. This makes the Good rice start. more fluffy. Let it soak for at least 30 minutes. Good. Freak of grain, it kind of has like a green hue. Oh, kind of oh like okay. Uh, I'm not like... The pro chef is not even using rice. Before we go there though, soaking rice, very good step, often overlooked. Uh, most people know to wash rice. Some people don't even wash their rice. That's to remove excess starch. But uh, one really overlooked step uh, that I think really helps rice, easier said than done though, is soaking it. In the past, uh, when I used to have a Chinese takeout restaurant, the night before we would let the rice soak overnight. And I will tell you, you come out with, you know, it's, it's like, you know, some diminishing returns. I, I think most people wouldn't notice, but the quality of the rice, if it's allowed to soak overnight, really comes out uh, a touch better, uh, if not much better. What, what's she using? What's what she using? using? Freak of grain, Fre like a green hue. Frika grain yeah. for biryani. Yeah. Just use basmati Shh. haya. <laughs> biryani real. is dish we make to celebrate special occasions. Yes. Who want to yes. celebrate by eating grain? Now, I, I'm nodding on all of this like I'm some authority <laughs> on Indian cuisine, which I am not. But in my new journey to discover more about Indian cuisine, because I am f finding it a lot of fun and quite fascinating. This lady's clearly taking a lot of liberties with the biryani, not even using basmati rice. And I'm fine with people putting their own spin on any type of traditional dish, but there are certain ingredients I feel like you shouldn't mess with. Maybe if she wanted to mix some of the frika into basmati rice or something like that, even then, you know, it's like making a taco without a tortilla, right? You just, you gotta have the right base. Using frika grain for basmati. Did she learn this <laughs> from Jamie Olive Oil? <laughs> Mr. You Sopa for ramen. What is this diversity kitchen? When it comes to rice, don't need diversity. Yeah. White rice matter. White rice matter. <laughs> frika grain, it kind of has like a green hue and it's a great source of fiber. Fiber. Yeah, you want yeah. fiber, you go eat leaf. Yes. You go be giraffe. Yeah. Giraffe eat fiber every day. Uncle Roger don't want that life. Yeah, listen. Uh... <laughs> When I'm eating celebratory foods, you know, these traditional foods, comfort foods, I'm not too concerned about my health, quite frankly. When I'm eating something that I'm celebrating for, I'm not really thinking about my health, okay? Give me all the carbs, g give me all the starches. By the way, I'm no longer pre-diabetic. Woo, go me. But put me back into pre-diabetic status when I'm celebrating. I'm gonna have my cake and my basmati rice and my ice cream and cookies and bread. You get the idea. And waffles. Oh, waffles. The water's boiling. I add salt to the water. That's not enough salt. Yeah, that's no. Left it on for 15 minutes. Drain the rice. Drain the rice? I know, I know. Yes, for, I know for what biryani is different but though. This draining rice method. 
it actually okay for Briyani. Yes. I know, it pained Uncle Roger to say <laughs> that also. In Briyani, you cook the rice until 80% done, yes. and then you finish yes, cooking yes, yes. the rice in pot, but only for Briyani. But I did react to Fatima, as my friend Fatima from culinary school, she did an Epicurious video that came out recently. So I'm using hers, I meant to say, I'm using Fatima's recipe as the benchmark. Just wanted to clear that up. Sorry, I make mistakes too. Okay, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. Drain the rice before it gets all mushy. I'm not going to be too tough on this See, dude because he's a home very cook. Painful, but Uncle Roger accept this because different culture make rice differently. Just some culture is wrong. <laughs> Start making the marinade for the shrimp. Oh, shrimp biryani. Okay. Less common, but okay. So fennel seeds. Fennel, good. Coriander seed, good. These first. It's smelling nice already. Why am I feeling like we should be watching her really be paying attention to her biryani rather than the pro chef's biryani? That's kind of a weird choice by Epicurious there. Cayenne pepper, mace. Mace, good. Okay. And then my yogurt. Yogurt, yogurt good. Marinate the meat. The plain, unsweetened yogurt. It starts to tenderize the meat already. A little bit of salt. Uncle Roger like Rinku, the Indian knee so far. She look like she know what she doing. But her yeah. voice so high pitch and little <laughs> bit creepy. I will start making the marinade for the She trip. sounds sweet to me. Rinku, she sounds but lovely. Her voice sound like it from the movie Rinku. <laughs> if you don't eat my biryani, you're gonna die in seven days. Ha ha ha. To cut he didn't peel the potato. Cubes. Could we do it? I don't know. You have to peel it first. Let's peel it first. Yeah, thank you. Do you like the skins on? <laughs> I do not like the skins on. <laughs> Did he even wash it either? Is this guy, this guy no common sense and he cooked for his girlfriend? Again, I'm not going to be too tough on this dude. I, I like the format of this video. You know, they have people at multiple levels. That's actually a really great idea. But yeah, this guy clearly doesn't know what the f he's doing, but that's okay. That is okay. You don't have to know what you're doing as long as you learn from it at the end. Right, Jack? Use these smaller baby potatoes Kay. because I can leave them whole. For biryani, Uncle Roger only use potato if you're making vegetarian biryani. If you got meat in your biryani, then you don't need potato. Yeah, in Fatima's video, I can't recall, I think she had potato in there too, but she mentioned there are some parts of uh, India, Pakistan, where they won't put in potatoes or it's criminal not to. Can you clarify? I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Let me know in the comments below. I just want to point out the types of potato that they're using. Not that it really matters for this particular application, but she is using these what looks like Yukon gold potatoes. And if you go back to the level one guy, those are russet potatoes. They are different. So russet potatoes are or otherwise known as a chef's potato. Uh, they are known to be drier. They're better suited for things like French fries, mashed potatoes generally. Not to say you can't use these waxy potatoes for mashed potatoes either. I wouldn't really recommend it for fries. Uh, and I said the term waxy. So these potatoes are known to have what they call a waxier texture. These potatoes are better suited for something like um, potato salad with mayonnaise and stuff like that. You can absolutely use it for uh, for fries, for um, for mashed potatoes. In fact, at Beauty in Essex, we had, we made our mashed potatoes with uh, Yukon potatoes, but generally rule of thumb in the professional kitchen, uh, you know, russet potatoes are used for things like French fries and mash, waxy potatoes more for things like, you know, it's more moist for that. You're gonna wanna use it for something like potato salad. Is there any skin I should peel on this <laughs> before I move any further? I'm gonna make this into cubes. I'll do the onions. Onion, onion good. And I already feel these onions are Gotta strong. Gotta have onions. So as you can see, I wanna do them nice and thin. Okay. We're gonna peel the carrots. Carrots? Carrot. No. Mm. Again, carrot, okay. If you're making vegetarian biryani, stop putting vegetable in everything. Western yeah, people. When I think of biryani, I don't think there, of carrot. You're putting pea also. Just stop, just yeah, stop. I, I didn't no notice the peas. Vegetable tastes like sad. The reason I'm cutting it like He didn't peel so those either. I think it's pretty. <laughs> you forgot to peel skin again. Chili powder. Chili powder, good. Clove. Good. Star anise, Indian bay leaf. Good, good. Cumin seeds. You want cumin powder, not cumin seed. Turn this down a touch. All correct so far. Ginger garlic paste. My lamb. 
Miss Danielle, okay. pre-cooking the meat first, okay? Yeah, and also notice she was toasting the spices first. I mentioned this in uh, Fatima's video, uh, also Epicurious, where I said toasting spices really rounds out the flavor profile, and it I feel that it really helps uh, work with the dish more harmoniously. Very important step. Rose water. Not with just in biryani either. Water. I'm gonna go ahead and let this simmer for about an hour until the lamb is nice and tender. Now I'm gonna make my saffron milk. I'm gonna add my rose water first. Rose water again. And then my Your saffron. whole dish can, you're making biryani, not perfume. No need so much rose water. A little rose water's okay. Let, let, let me know in the comments what you think about the rose water. Don't stir with your finger. Yeah, Uncle that. Roger don't want your COVID. I think she just started <laughs> a new variant. With that said though, by health department standards, you are allowed to have bare hand contact as long as the food product is not a ready to eat item, meaning like it's not, it's not a salad, it's not steak, off the grill, cooked off the grill, sliced, and then you use your bare hands to put it on because at that moment, that steak is now ready to eat. However, if you take the steak raw, salt, pepper, put it on the grill barehanded, that's fine because it's not ready to eat. The food is still gonna be cooked. It's gonna be put on the grill. Onto our freak. No. <laughs> Part of this wonderful freak. No. Flavorful mm -mm. to par cook our freak. Mm to par cook our frika. Mm. No par cook your frika. How about try par throw it up? How about that? Pinch of salt <laughs> and my frika. We're only par cooking Ooh. this, right? The frika is okay. now I come mean, to a boil. I mean, that part she's got right. So I'm just not a fan of the frika. I do like the step where she's taking the juices from this and using that from, from the lamb and using the, what, is it the juice from the lamb? Let me go back. We can move on to our freak. No, no. Part of this wonderful freak. No. So it's the broth of the lamb. However, I think this is supposed to be a, a lot thicker where you don't have broth like that when you're making biryani, right? Because you're going to build layers and you want that protein to be very saucy and heavily spiced. And yeah, I like the step of using the broth for, um, for, uh, for the rice or the frika but I feel like the cookery of the lamb is no longer correct. Uh, actually, it wasn't correct to begin with. I, I just feel like it's too liquidy. Again, I'm basing this off of one video, but remember, when you're working in a professional kitchen and a chef shows you a, how to make a dish, basically you get one or two, if you're lucky, two dem de demos of how to make it. And then it's up to you as a trained cook to be able to replicate that. So that's kind of how I'm treating this. I watched Fatima's video. She's the chef in this case. I'm the student, I'm the cook. I'm paying attention to what she's doing. And okay, now I got to replicate it. I'm not literally replicating it. I hope to one day to make my own biryani in a video. I, I do plan to do more cooking videos, but that's besides the point. But I'm treating this the same way mentally. I'm observing and I'm like, okay, but the way I was taught by chef is, such and such and such. There's always more than one way to do something, but again, I just feel like this is way off the mark. Hope you're enjoying this video because there is an extended version available on my Patreon. That's right, by becoming a patron, you get to watch extended versions of certain episodes along with patron exclusive content. So be sure to visit the link below and become a patron today. And with that said, back to the episode. I'm just gonna strain this. Oh, My freak is par cooked, so oh. now we can Oh, you want to eat that? This and nephew, you tell me, you want to eat that? <coughs> Briani, it's so beautiful. Yes, Rice with yes. Meat, everything so beautiful. And then you have this bull <coughs> grain. Yeah. Where it got appetizing. Another reason why I'm not a fan of the frika is because I feel when you're trying to recreate a dish and give your own twist, again, it's okay to take some liberties, but one of the signature, I feel like one of the signature textures of a biryani is the, I mentioned the basmati rice, gives it a certain lightness and fluffiness. And one thing that things like grains or wild rice or farro or whatever it is, they're not light. They have a certain heavy, fibrous heaviness to them. So I don't feel like it's going to really invoke what a biryani is about. I, you know, I'm just trying to give you a little insight. If I were to make my own version, that's some of the thought process that would go through my mind is how do I still invoke the core of the dish? I would have taken liberties at other places, quite frankly. Cinnamon. Okay. Bay leaves are in. Please don't let me down. Please don't let me down. Wait, what? The rice for about a minute. 
Hmm. I think now you like you you stir frying the rice. Is she trying to make fire rice now? Yeah. Hi, uh... Okay, I'm a little Do confused have... now. Maybe she knows something I don't, but. From what I remember in Fatima's video, it's very important that you're very light on the rice, that you don't break up the grain. Uh, you know, grain structure in, in a dish like this is very important. And she's opening herself to opportunity to ruining that by basically stir frying it. Again, let's see what the end product is, but um, I'm a little thrown off. Half the rice at the bottom, creating the base layer. Since basmati is white, you can really see the strands of the saffron. Because I'm using Frika, it's not gonna have that dynamic, bright color that kind of comes through. So you think the problem with Frika is the color? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Roger, got some hairy ass legs, bro. <laughs> Add in some more curry before we put half a teaspoon. So now we put another ooh, half. Ooh, this guy's biryani is not looking good whatsoever. He didn't build any layers. It's not in a covered pot. He just literally mixed everything together, kind of like Jack's cooking. We're gonna mix it up. Ah, nephew Steven, that looked like really nice risotto. <laughs> Too bad this we show about biryani. So I'm making a fairly stiff dough. Mmm, dough? This look promising. Water, half the jar. She's gonna make a seal for her pot. Oh, to get yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuck. I've seen that. Uh, in Fatima's video, she did it in a pot covered pot, but I, I do remember seeing uh, in uh, Indian restaurants I've gone in the past that there was a layer of dough on the pot. An old ancient trick. Do you want it Good. long enough? That what all <laughs> the aunties say. And it's definitely long enough. Hello, aunties. Oh. So now I am creating the seal. Seal good? Which? Traditional method. Simulating Indian thumb. Traps the steam and all the flavor. Seal shut. Oh, okay. Maybe I am... Am I rem remembering this incorrectly? I thought there were versions where there was a layer of dough over the top and then no cap. I could be, again, let me know, guys. Please educate me. I want to know more about this. However, in Fatima's video, she used a kitchen towel to hold those seals. In this, in this case, she's using the dough. For those of you who eat biryani regularly, do you eat that dough? Do you peel it off? Do you eat it together with the rest of the rice and ingredients? I'm curious to know. 45 minutes too long. Your rice already pre-cooked. And then you stir fry the rice some more. Mm. And then another 45 minutes, uh, yeah, your rice gonna be porridge. See, here the problem with making biryani like this, the rice have to cook at the same time as the prawn. It's very tricky, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. hard to yep. get right unless yep. you're super experienced. Yes, I, I agree with that. That's the tricky part, right? Is making sure that uh, everything is cooked properly and it takes a little bit of timing. So we know that uh, uh, shrimp doesn't take much time at all to cook compared to something like lamb or chicken. But in the lamb and chicken versions, the lamb and chicken is already pre-cooked, right? In that scenario, yeah, maybe it will need a little bit more time. I don't know. You also don't want to overcook the shrimp because no one likes tough overcooked shrimp either. But let's see what our end product looks like. Ugh. Ooh, ooh, so ooh, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Nigel, uh, Uncle Roger's about to point it out too. There is so much liquid on the bottom of that pot and her lamb was, you know, she's supposed to be level three. Uh, I just, her lamb looks very anemic, doesn't look very spiced. The sauce, what's supposed to be the sauce on that lamb, uh, she used to cook the rice, but I feel like, you know, at least my recollection of having biryani, one of the beautiful things about it, even though everything's cooked together, the dish itself is very dynamic. Sometimes you get a little more hit of the, of the uh, sauce on the protein and some parts of the rice don't have much sauce at all, you know? And then there's a lot of diverse textures in there, right? Because you have the soft, fluffy rice, you have the protein, and then you get a little kick of the sauce. I just, this is, this is just one big mess. Cookery is really off point as someone again. I'm drawing from my nearly two decades of experience working in a kitchen That looks actually pretty good. It pretty could stop lying to people. Yeah, she, the amber hurt of cooking <laughs> Now for the moment of truth. I have to pry this open. That's how tightly it sealed my pot mm, mm, Look mm, at mm, that. Mm, I think I it looks I almost feel like it wasn't cooked enough, right? Just based on the dough, but 
I, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm not super well versed in this, so, but I can just tell by the way it peeled that dough still looks a little bit raw. Uh, but then again, maybe it's not meant to be consumed at all. Let me know in the comments. And you know what? While you're about to roast me in the comments, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. And if you're not already, subscribe. It's a little thing for you, but does great things for the channel. Thank you very much. That, I think it looks... It looked, it looked decent. The last thing that I Definitely add looks better than the level three rose chef. Water. Rose water. Subtle. Of that too much? Yes. Just a few drops, enough to... You poured the whole thing. Biryani's cooking. That's a lot. That is a lot. So for me, it, her her biryani, again, doesn't have that dynamic look to it. it. I feel like it could have been spiced a lot heavier. I don't know. Rice look a bit overcooked, look a bit mushy. Let me show yeah. you. See, yeah, yeah. see the rice all clumping you can, together, yes. see? 100%. It's sticking to her spoon. Yep. I told you it's gonna overcook. And then pistachios. Pis no, no, not pistachio. Um. I think it's overcooked, not because, well, yes because of the 45 minutes, which I just find it odd that that dough didn't brown up more. Even though it was on the stove top, you know, a big pot like that on heat, 45 minutes, don't forget the the flames will still rise up to the sides and maybe they use an induction burner. So, but even then I, I just, I, I don't know, something's off. I think number one, she overcooked her rice. Uh, when she strained it, she didn't strain it well enough and it was cooked for 45 minutes, so that rice is just completely nuked. Oh, and also she started it hot, right? She mixed it in with the oil, you know, she basically fried that first layer. I think it was just too harsh and again, <laughs> up the rice. We finish it with some of our caramelized onions, fresh cilantro. cilantro. This is how you could tell Cilantro, okay. And to serve the biryani, I have raita. Right, are good. It's a yogurt sauce. Correct. It's a, a, a yogurt sauce, uh, very commonly served with, um, <laughs> I say this like I'm a pro, but you know, in Fatima's video, they showed that as well. Uh, served with biryani. Actually, no, I've had Raika before with Indian foods. You can tell how uh, how insecure I am in this video. <laughs> Only level two needs Rinku, make biryani. The professional chef needs Daniel Freaker, like, I can't believe it, Freaker, hiya. Did you graduate from Jamie <laughs> Olive Oil Cooking School? You make all the Indian ancestor cry now, all the rimaki. Part of the learning process is also seeing what not to do. Uh, so I definitely learned a lot about what not to do. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And let me know in the comments below what you would like me to react to next. I did mention in, uh, Fatima's video that she will be coming on to the show as a guest. So let me know what video you'd like us to react to together. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sao, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.